All right. Hi, this is James Zhang, and I'm here with Todd Franks today, and we're going to be talking about New Deal, um, Cambridge Court that just came out. So, Todd, thanks for jumping on. Uh, maybe give us a little of your background, and then we'll get into this New Deal. Sure. Uh, thanks for having me, James. I really appreciate the opportunity. Uh, I have um, been in brokerage for 20 years now and currently uh, affiliated with Greystone. Uh, we started uh, our affiliation with Greystone last year in March and uh, it's been a great relationship. Um, we're the investment sales team here in Dallas. Uh, and we specialize in BNC class multifamily, North Texas. All right. So, um, so this deal just came out, I think, last week. Um, I guess give us a little bit high level, maybe a little bit about the seller and why you guys are coming to the market with the deal right now. Sure. Yeah. So uh, I sold the property to the current owner uh, 12 years ago. So that was 2008. As everyone remembers, that was... Uh, uh, its peak in the market. Uh, so uh, they, it was one of their best assets though, uh, even buying it at the peak. Uh, the owner self-manages out of California. Uh, it has been kind of her pet semi-retirement project. And she decided when she turned 75 years old that she was going to sell it. And, you know, wasn't really worried about the economy. Uh, you know, we were, we had, brought several off-market offers throughout the years. Uh, you know, last year um, especially was, was highly active, but she just, you know, had it in her mind, hey, I want to run this at the age of 75. I'm going to retire from it and sell it. So, um, you know, sometimes the client directs the marketing. All right. So, um, so 52 units in Waxahachie. Um, here's sort of a sky view of Dallas and sort of where – where this property is and I guess maybe do you have anything sort of like um, for this location in particular sort of that micro market that sub market can you share any information just sort of about the area oh yeah uh, Watsahatchee is a great sub market I mean it's ranked number four for occupancy out of 117 sub markets in the Dallas Fort Worth area I think average occupancy is a bit over 96 percent in the sub market it. Um, you know, the, there's a lot of uh, blue collar and gray collar work in this area. Uh, you know, recently I, I saw an article last week in the Dallas Morning News where in Red Oak, which you can see is just slightly north of Watsahatchee, it's the neighboring city to the north, uh, Google and Compass are putting in uh, massive data centers out there and have bought large swaths of land. Uh, you also have the rail port uh, to the south and west of this um, and you know it's it's a great solid low turnover community there are not a lot of you know 1980s construction properties in Watsahatchee it really you know the area developed out I would say you know after the 1980s boom and uh, so you know not a lot of immediate competition in the area and uh, you know, th these apartments are relatively affordable uh, compared to everything else in the immediate area. Yeah, I switched over to an aerial and, you know, 35 sort of cutting through um, Waxahachie and then I guess uh, US 77. Talk a little bit about the surrounding um, neighboring properties and then maybe um, some of the retail around there. Sure. Uh, yeah, what's great about the property is, you know, it stays very well occupied by virtue of its location. It's right off of the service road of 287. Uh, you can see it from the highway and they get lots of drive by traffic. Uh, asking the manager, you know, where she does get most of her traffic from, she said, you know, it's just that sign out front, drive by traffic. Um, and the uh, area immediately, you can see right across the highway is the Dart Container Corporation. Uh, they produce paper products, um, you know, paper cups, that sort of thing. And uh, that's a large employer for the area. And in the past, they, ha you know, had a lot of uh, tenants that worked for the Dart uh, Container Corporation. And also Baylor Scott White, um, the current manager actually used to work there 
as well and uh, you know quite a few folks from, from there and you know you can see all the retail in the area that intersection of 77 and 287 is you know a very vibrant area uh, you can see you got a Home Depot right across the highway from a Lowe's and uh, you know, a Walmart there on the southern side of 287 um, you know everything from uh, Chick-fil-A and um, you know uh, all the all the major I would say you know uh, grocery stores and national credit tenants kind of have a, a presence here uh, this is you know that's the crossroads of Watsahatchee and it's um, you know about a mile down the road so it's uh, very convenient another you know attraction of the property property is probably about 60 percent families uh, from what the manager has told me and you know reason being is that uh, Wedgworth Elementary School kind of to the south uh, is a very good elementary school within walking distance of the property uh, so you know you also have the uh, high school over there down on 77 and you know the middle school is is within walking distance as well uh, a couple of colleges out there or universities the southwest assembly of god university is is a large campus there and then navarro college at watsahatchee is also within walking distance of the property they do not have a lot of students though you know that's not a, a tenant profile they have ever tried to tap um, talking to the manager you know they've had one or two students living at the property in the three years she's been working there great um, so here's here's a couple photos aerials I guess maybe touch on the condition of the interiors it looks like the exteriors are in pretty good shape um, how's how's the interiors of the property um, and then I know you guys put a virtual tour so we'll put a link to that in the in the notes as well um, but talk about the interiors and what the current owner has done so far. Sure. So this photo represents more of uh, what, you know, we would just title as an upgraded unit uh, by virtue of the paint colors. Uh, about 30% of the units received the updated gray and white paint scheme. Other than that, um, you know, they do a nice job. They're very nice, clean units. Um, you know, they resurface countertops and, you know, but most of the cabinetry is still the original wood color. And, you know, for the other seven, approximately 70% of the property is gonna have this uh, la creme color, <laughs> which is uh, kind of a yellow beige. And it's a little dated, um, but again, you know, they just, they do a really great job of, you know, keeping everything really nice and, and clean, uh, but it could use an update. Uh, on the interior in terms of, you know, backsplash, modern fixtures, uh, the flooring could be updated. For example, they have, you know, still carpet in the living areas and the um, wood vinyl plank uh, in the kitchens and, and bathrooms. But, you know, that vinyl planking that is in the kitchen and bathrooms was done, uh, you know, a little while ago, could be updated with a, a modern, more modern color as well. But it, again, it looks nice. It's very neat, clean. All the appliance packages are white out there. Um, you know, you could definitely uh, go to a black or a stainless in this area. Uh, really, they bought the property and, you know, have just run it themselves out of California. And uh, while they take very good care of the property on the exterior, especially, you know, new roofs in two, December of 2017, um, you know, they've uh, spent a lot on uh, the structural and uh, mechanical components of the property, but I think the low hanging fruit on this one is, you know, the cosmetic update. Uh, I would paint the exterior again with more of a modern color. It's still the uh, tans and, and cream colors and uh, kind of like a beige accent, uh, but you know, that that could be updated and the property could use a cosmetic modernization. Yeah, so I mean, getting into sort of the structural components of the property, you know, built in 1983, it has individual HVAC, washer dryer connections, um, maybe touch on the unit mix and then sort of how they're building back right now. Sure, uh, yeah, it's 52 units. Uh, they use one as a leasing office and they use one as a model unit. Uh, those could be brought back online, so to speak. Um, obviously, you could lease the model unit very easily. 
Um, the leasing office hasn't been reconfigured or anything. You know, you could also uh, build a standalone leasing office. If uh, you'll see on the previous slide, there's an island, like a little park in the center of the parking lot. Hmm. And, uh, you know, that would be a great spot for a leasing office. Um, and, you know, that's another amenity you could add uh, as well as, you know, finish out that little uh, park area, maybe put a playground in there too, something like that. But, uh, you know, I, again, I'd bringing those units online would obviously add more revenue to the property. Uh, they stay pretty well full. They're all two bedroom, one bath units. They're uh, 800 square feet. And, you know, you can see the, uh, the little floor plan down there, how it's laid out. Um, you know, they have full size washer dryer connections. And that's another value add opportunity there is if you wanted to actually supply the washers and dryers and in charge for those uh, that option for folks that you know don't have any and, and don't want to bring their own in uh, the property does not have an on-site <clears throat> laundry facility so you know if uh, that might be an opportunity as well to build out something like that on the back end of a new leasing office uh, for those folks that you know, do not bring their own washer dryers, or if you did not want to rent them out yourself. Um, you know, as you can see, you highlighted here, it's built in 83, uh, individually metered for electricity. They do not bill back for anything else like uh, water or sewer and virtually all the other properties uh, in, the, in the immediate area do. Uh, so that's really, you know, a great side opportunity as well. All right. Um, maybe touch on you. We touched on the roofs. Any other big capex that they've done in their whole period? Um, you know, this is a pretty good summary sheet. I really, um, you know, the security system that they put in place is something that they're pretty proud of. They have cameras uh, throughout the property. They didn't necessarily want to gate it off. Um, you know, they uh, thought that would be, you know, kind of close off the community. Uh, so, you know, they have a nice security system out there uh, that's monitored. Uh, you know, you can see that's probably one, two, three, four from the bottom. Uh, they spent quite a bit of money on that. Uh, you know, they've done a nice job just keeping up with the property going through this. They will be uh, sealing and restriping the parking lot that is getting done this month, uh, weather permitting. We've, uh, you know, we're hoping to have it done prior to bringing it to market, but uh, we've had quite a bit of rain. Uh, here this spring. So uh, that, that should be done before the end of the month though. All right. And then, uh, so this is just sort of their handout when they, when someone comes into the office, they have sort of uh, one floor plan and this is the rent. And so um, let's get into, so their, their asking rent right now is 995 and that's, that's excluding, I guess the tenants aren't paying water. So maybe talk about the comps and what they're doing and then maybe where you think this property can go. Yeah, so on uh, this page you can see is, you know, you go down the list here uh, that, you know, most of the other properties do bill back for um, water as well. You'll see it says water and electric. Uh, the neighboring property, um, which is North Town Village, um, you know, they have uh, gas and water are included on that one as well. Um, their rents over there are competitive too, but it's not uh, in as good of condition as, um, <clears throat> excuse me, not in good as condition as uh, Cambridge. And it, uh, uh, it's $1,200 to move in. Uh, <laughs> so they charge quite a bit in uh, move-in fees on that property. Uh, but the rest of them, uh, you can see everyone, when you look at the adjusted rent with the billbacks, uh, they average $1,052 a unit on average and $1.26 a foot. That includes all their unit types. If you look at kind of the bottom right-hand corner here, we have rent comparables by floor plan. And given that this property is all two-bedroom, one-bath, this is us comping it out to the two-bedroom properties in the area. You can see that they're, you know, over $100, you know, about $116 a unit below market rent. Uh, when you adjust for the billbacks, and I think they stay very full by virtue of that. Okay, so there's probably at least fifty to a hundred dollars 
um, increase you could see here either through through rubs or just increasing the rent to sort of equal it out. Um, yeah, and there's so. there's plenty of comps right there in that little pocket, and and you're probably comparable to most in terms of location, as in you're you know right off the the highway right there. Um, so in yeah, terms I of say, yeah, yeah, we're probably superior in terms of location just by you know being right off the highway. Uh, we've sold uh, and have worked on quite a few of the properties out there. Um, you know, Victorian Square is one. Uh, you can see that one, uh, the owners, after we sold that property to them, uh, they went ahead and, uh, you know, did an upgrade plan. Uh, their rents were about the same prior to upgrading the units. And you can see they, they've gone up to 1,275 a unit or buck four five a foot. Right. So, you know, really, I feel like if you're going to invest uh, money in this area, you will get it back. I think, you know, the area is uh will kind of demand you know something upgraded and nice uh most of the properties in Watsahatchee tend to be owner operated they're owned by local uh individuals and you know they just they haven't had that cosmetic update all right awesome um in terms of pro forma what do, what are you so we talked about some of these things i guess how does that translate over to the numbers on the pro forma for the new buyer um so you know really given the uh, current situation you can see very top line uh above your your red square there the potential market rent um we're not they increase the rent for you know the first couple of years uh everyone at this point you know the feedback is they're just you know renewing tenants at the current rent so you know what we do is we just burn off that loss to lease getting the current residents up to market rent um you know the conditions were only for a short period of time. Uh, what happened, this property has been incredibly stable over the years. And when you uh, come into our due diligence box, uh, we attached the 2017, 18, 19, and trailing 12 month PL to show that because last summer there was a dip where they had 10 units go vacant all at once. And that was because of that dark corporation, which was right across the highway, had massive layoffs at that time. And so that impacted quite a few of their tenants. Um, but the property's uh, stable, and I think you'll go into the debt. It uh, now is back in the uh, you know high 90s. They just have two vacant units currently. Uh, and it does qualify for agency financing. Uh, so you know we keep the bad debt at about the same level it's been historically and you know burn off that model unit and uh you know we uh also add the rub income and uh and it that adds you know uh quite a bit to the bottom line i think this is pretty simple stuff to implement uh that takes your effective gross you know from about 536,000 to about 610 okay so that's on the revenue side anything on expenses here um in terms, I mean, obviously most people are, this is going to be an interesting year for real estate taxes, I think. Um, so we'll, we'll have to see how that shakes out, but it looks like you guys probably came up to about 75% of purchase price on the real estate taxes. Any, and I guess she's, she's self-managing. So you put in a management fee there as well. I mean, um, you, can you talk about any management companies? Maybe if somebody wants the third party out there, is there any, any management companies out there? Uh, yeah, I know uh, Wainer Multifamily has a presence in Watsahatchee, uh, but again, a lot of folks tend to self-manage in this area because they're local owner operators, um, but Wainer has a presence down there and uh, they would manage the property. Okay. Um, right. As yep. far as other Anything adjustments else? on yeah. expenses, yeah, I, you know, you'll kind of see for repair and maintenance, uh, they're a bit low. They, they're kind of heavy on contract service contract services and it's because I believe it's because you know they have two part-time employees they're open Monday through Friday from uh, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. and that's when the employees work so uh, you'll see you know we, we went ahead and lowered contract services increased repair and maintenance uh, to have more of a full-time uh, you know I guess in uh, maintenance man there that's doing more of that work uh, that, that allowed us to low, lower contract services a little bit. Uh, payroll looks to be about average. 
Uh, so we kept that the same and, you know, just going through everything else, it, it seemed to line up with averages. Um, you know, you touched on real estate taxes, 75% of the whisper price, which is 4.4 million. And uh, we added a 5% management fee. I think you could, you know, probably get it done for a little bit less, you know, maybe through Wayne or if they have a presence in the area. Okay. Um, so you said whisper price of 4.4. Um, so we, we underwrote the deal sort of two ways. We looked at Fannie debt and Freddie SBL uh, because of the size. On the Fannie side, we were getting to about three and a half million, anywhere from one to three years interest only. Rate on yield maintenance was about three and a half. And then on step downs, about four. Uh, you know, because the loan is under six million, we're at um, 450,000 in reserve. So that's a combination of um, 18 months PNI. 12 months taxes, 12 months insurance, and 12 months of replacement reserves. And then on the Freddie SBL side, it's about same loan amount, three and a half, three and a half million. Um, you can go one to three years IO and the rates a little bit higher four to 425. And that's on a step down prepay. And the interest reserve for Freddie SBL right now is 12 months of PNI, and it will be released after um, 90 days after they sort of get all these declarations off of us in terms of federal, state, local, um, and Texas is slowly doing that. I mean, we're like 25% open right now. So hopefully in the next couple of months, mm -hmm. it'll, it'll reopen fully and uh, you'll get that interest reserve back. Um, in terms of underwriting, you know, Fannie and Freddie, they're going to look at T3 net rental, the T12 other income, and then the expenses are pretty much pro forma, sort of what you're going to come in at. Uh, utilities were T12 and then real estate taxes. I think we took them up to 75% of purchase as well. So you're, you're coming in with good uh, metrics on your debt um, on this property. And I know you guys just listed this property, um, I guess, last week. But I guess what's the best way for if people are interested to set up a tour? What's the best way to reach out to you and learn more about the deal? Yeah, you have um, contact information right here. Uh, you know, just shoot us an email. Or give me a call, you know, happy to discuss the details of the deal with you, set up property tours. We are doing property tours. We try to limit them to one day a week. Um, you know, part of the reason that we did the virtual tour and the interview with the manager online, which, you know, you'll be able to uh, see here if you click on it is to, you know, uh, try to help out, out folks that can't travel right now and, you know, uh, are practicing social distancing. But, you know, please give me a call. It's Todd.Franks at Greystone ISG for investment sales group.com. And uh, the number is 972-916-9397. All right. Thanks a lot, Todd. Thanks, James.